Hey, Westside family, God bless you all. Oh, it's been a while since I've been with you. My apologies. Uh, it's been a little bit of a crazy month uh, for myself and my family as we have moved into a new home and still unpacking some boxes and uh, just uh, the chaos and busyness of only having 24 hours in a day and not being able to have a Wednesday night uh, get together or what I, I would even like to start calling uh, a time of discipleship uh, where we learn and grow to be like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, but I'm here this Wednesday evening and I'm excited and I, I am really uh, uh, humbled because as we move forward in these days, we are seeing how much more God is revealing more to his church, how much we need him, but not just how much we need him, how much he, how much he looks for us to respond to him, to respond to his instruction, respond to his guidance um, through the Holy Spirit. Um, and so there's something I want to share with you this evening um, that I think we'll dig into further down the road in different areas or different times, time frames. And that God just kind of gave me two words, and one is act and one is react. <clears throat> and I feel a personal conviction of mine, and I think that really lines up with the word, that God is longing to see his disciples and the discipleship process come through our actions and come through our reactions. Um, and in the church we live in, I'm sorry, the times we live in today in Western civilization or our Western culture, society, uh, the church in the Western culture doesn't do the greatest job of acting. What I mean by that is initiating things, um, initiating certain things that God is longing to see followed through with when it comes to uh, uh, brothers and sisters within the church, when it comes to those who don't know Jesus, when it comes to uh, communities and practices and principles that God is longing for his church to initiate. Um, even sharing our faith, we know, generally speaking, uh, according to the statistics and data, that those believers in Jesus Christ most um, don't share their faith. Most don't share the good news that they have uh, received and have been commissioned to go and share. Um, and so just that one example alone really demonstrates our lack of our action or our initiating that God wants us to, to, to see more of and to step into, if you will. And I think that God is really testing the church um, in the times that we're in. Uh, so if he can't get us to initiate, if he can't get us to to, to begin or start something or act or take the first step. Oftentimes we see God um, either do something or allow something to get the church to react, meaning a circumstance, situations, seasons in life that are uh, ideal or favorable um, are, are, are a means to test us, that God wants to see us respond accordingly uh, to the scriptures. Um, and so uh, I said this in the past, I don't believe God is testing the world. God is testing his children. He's testing his church to see how we respond or, or, and how we react to the world around us. Um, I think of the church, the early church in Acts. You know, Jesus told the followers, he told the disciples, the apostles, and the followers, um, don't go anywhere. Wait for the gift. Wait for the promise of my Father. 
uh, which would be the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they were, because he says, then you will receive power and you will be my witnesses um, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, according to their understanding of the ends of the earth. And so what happens is you see <clears throat> the Holy Spirit come and, and fill the faithful 120 and uh, you just see this uh, miraculous overpowering of the Holy Spirit that manifests that manifests uh, himself through through speaking in other languages that other people could identify with. Um, but then after that, you kind of just see this uh, uh, waiting period. So. So here you have this time where nothing's really happening and you get to, and this is early in Acts chapter two, and then you start getting into Acts chapter, I believe it's six and seven, eight, where now we start to see the persecution of the church, right? And so here comes this persecution through Saul before he was Paul. And then we see the first person being stoned, Stephen, as the first martyr uh, for Christ. Um, as as the as a, a representative of the church, the early church, and then the Bible says in Acts eight four that the church scattered. But the Bible says that when they scattered, that they shared the word of Christ wherever they went, and we see the example with Philip, um, you know, sharing his his faith uh, with the Ethiopian eunuch and and those things. But but. So it took this, God was looking for a reaction since they wouldn't initiate this move. Here comes this persecution upon the church um, that caused the church to spread and they moved to Judea and Samaria, preaching the word of God, sharing the word of Christ. And that, that was the heart of, of the father is to share the word of Christ. And it took this reaction because the initiating process uh, really wasn't happening. And so now you had this reaction process from persecution. Um, so that's just an example uh, of, of us responding to things uh, in the world. But I, I wanna talk more in the context of how we respond to the world with the nature and character of God, uh, which does entail sharing the word of Christ or the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is simply the gospel that Jesus shared, which comes down to the gospel of the kingdom. Um, and so I want to go through some scripture here uh, in Matthew. And I believe, where am I at? Am I in Matthew? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Just bear with me. Um, I believe it's Matthew. Chapter, I'm drawing, a, I'm drawing a blank, sorry. Let's see, this is five. Ah, I can't remember. Hold on one second. Um, okay, sorry there, yeah. Uh, I had a huge brain issue in my, my thought process. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 5 is where I want to go. Um, and I want to go down where Jesus starts talking about how to, how to react, how to act, but also how to react, how to respond um, when opposition comes at us. And I'm just going to start in verse 43, where he says, you have heard that it was said, okay, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, let me just stop there. This was never a command from God in the Old Testament. This was something the Jews took on themselves that they figured out in their own thought process that, well, if I must love my neighbor, uh, which means someone I might agree with, and I must hate my enemy, those who I don't agree with are those who don't agree with me. But that's not it at all. God was saying your neighbor, anyone near you, regardless of thought process, belief, actions, He's saying, he's not saying that. He's saying, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those 
who persecute you. He says, love your enemy. That is another word for bless them. And it's amazing. Meaning bless your enemy. How do we bless our enemy? Um, well, we speak well to and kind of, regardless of the opposition of a person. Because we know it's a spiritual battle. And we just really need to be encouraged that God is testing the church in this because there's a lot of opposition coming at the faith, coming at the belief of Jesus Christ, and it will continue to come uh, in higher volume um, and more severity. So God is preparing us um, to respond accordingly or to react accordingly. And this is a great reminder in the time and season that we're in with the chaos and anger and bewilderment and animosity that is just raging um, within the world today. So he says, He's basically saying, listen, bless your enemy. Speak well of them. Be kind to them. Don't hate them, but love them. You talk about a challenge, that in itself. Um, and uh, enemies aren't, aren't created from us. Enemies should never be created from us, meaning we don't create enemies. From our, from our initiative. It's not our idea or our heart to say, I'm going to create an enemy. But it's the opposition in response to our faith, response to our unwavering word that we trust in, that creates the opposition. You see, when we stand firm in the word of God and stand firm in the truth, and others don't believe or others don't agree, that is how the enemy uh, is created. That, it's not birthed from us. It's not birthed from our initiative to say, well, since you don't believe with me, I'm going to create an enemy of you. Um, no, it's to us. We don't have enemies. That's what he's saying. He's saying, love everyone. Respond, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but he's saying, Love everyone. Speak kindly of everyone. And this is a challenge for us in the church and that people are, 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 are looking and seeing what is our response to the madness in the world today. Um, so enemies are created because we stand firm in our faith and our, and our love for Jesus and his word. And, and someone else doesn't or someone else is upset at that. You know, that the reason the enemy is created is because they oppose him and that we trust in him and so they oppose us remember jesus says they hated me first you will be persecuted and they will hate you but remember they hated me first and because of me you are hated so it's not because of our own idea or our own agenda it's because we stand with jesus unwavering in our decision process according to the word of god and this is the great part in verse 45. He says, listen, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Let me go back to 44. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and good, and he sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. I really want to emphasize the beginning of that verse in 45, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. God is saying, I want the evidence of the adoption process into sonship to be seen to those by loving unconditionally, by loving uh, those who don't agree with us, by loving those who stand against us. Um, that he's saying that this, that this, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. This is evidence of our sonship, church. This is the amazing thing evidence of the adopted of the legal adoption process into sonship that now we are being raised in a brand new household from the kingdom of god that's our address and to love like jesus to love like the heavenly father um, is absolutely uh, mind-boggling and humbling but that's what he's calling us to do um, and then he goes on to verse 46, and this is really good. 
if, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? I like how we said the tax collectors because the tax collectors were despised. They were ones that uh, the Jewish community could not stand. They were angry with them. Why? Because they knew that the tax collectors uh, in the Roman Empire were cheats. Um, they were shysty. They were uh, uh, thieves. Uh, they, they, they were manipulators. I mean, the, you name it. The tax collector was just this uh, cheat, this scum, you know? And so what he's saying is this, listen, if only you who are my children love those who love you, then there's no differenti differentiation from those who don't know me and love those who love them. Meaning there's no separation of a standard of God's, God's trying to create a separation of a standard that goes beyond all understanding and standards of this world. So we are doing and acting the same in love if we love like those who don't love like Jesus. Meaning we just love those who love us. Well, anyone can do that. That's, that's not hard to do. Um, so he, he's setting the standard of love. Um, and this is where we really need to understand God is looking for us to react because there is opposition coming towards the church, opposition coming towards our belief in Jesus. And how are we going to react? Are we going to love like Jesus says in verse 46? Don't just love those who love you. But love those who don't. Let me go in verse 47. And if you agree only with your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even pagans do that? And I like that word agree. Or, or I'm sorry, greet. He says, and if you greet only your own people. So what does that mean to greet them? When you welcome them. Welcome. When you, when people that are that are your own people. They're like-minded. So let's just say brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's just say uh, those who are around us who uh, have the same agreement on lifestyle or decisions or political parties or whatever it may be, that we greet them with this embrace. It's not just a welcome. It's, it's an embrace. It's this warm, compassionate embrace. He's saying to not just greet those of your own, but, but, but greet those, embrace those who don't think like you. Wow, there's a challenge today because there are polar opposites, I mean, in the world today um, that are just spewing with hatred and, and, and indifference. Um, and this is what God says in verse 40, or Jesus. He says, be perfect. Be perfect. Here's a chance to react. And God's saying, if you react like this, this is a chance to walk in perfection. Now, listen, that's not us being perfect people. It's, it's, he's saying, be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect, this is an instance where our character is operating in the full measure of God. That when we, when, we, when we respond by the Holy Spirit and say, my, boy, my flesh wants to not love them, but I will welcome, I will embrace, I will, I, will, um, I will show kindness and speak well of, regardless of what I'm getting, right? It's not because a lot of times we operate on, on, on by what we get, and then that's what we dish out. That's why he also says in earlier in like verse 38, you heard it was said an eye for an eye, right? But God says, don't repay evil with evil. An eye for an eye was never meant for the, for the private community to take on their own. That was for, that was a judicial system or a magistrate system set up um, by those who, who operate in the law for justice back in the Old Testament. That was never meant for someone to take in their own hands, 
but that's what the Jews did. They took things into their own hands, and all of a sudden, what happened to them, they would do unto others. Okay? But God is calling us to love beyond that, regardless of what comes our way, regardless of what comes at us, the hatred, the spewed, vile hatred and wickedness, right? Um, how do we react? God is, God is testing the church. How do we respond, church? And so there in 48, he says, here's an opportunity to be perfect, to walk out perfection because we respond to the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit inside of us that has taken over our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And now we respond in the character in the fullness of, or, or in the fullness of God's character, because that's how God would operate. And in that instance, when we have the opportunity, we'll respond and walk out the perfection inside of us. Wow, that's a challenge. But God is testing the church. He's not testing the world. The world doesn't know him. We cannot be surprised that we have to keep the broad spectrum, church, that the world is lost and blind um, and completely broken and busted. And, and in fear. And when, they, and when, when fear, fear exudes itself um, in anger, being frightened can, can operate in anger and frustration. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. But God isn't calling us to do or be like that. He's calling us to love like him. He's calling us to react. And so God is, God is testing the church to see how we shall react. Maybe, maybe respond accordingly to the word and not our own opinions or ideas. Because that's really what it's coming down to today is are we going to respond accordingly according to the word of God, which is truth, and shall produce the fruit if we, if we trust in it and operate in it, or will we respond according to our own thought process and feelings apart from the spirit, which shall produce even more chaos and a, and a not so good testimony. Let's be a good testimony. Let's ask God this evening, Lord, let's just, let's do that together. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask, Lord, you would show us. And that not only would you show us, but that we would respond. We would react accordingly to your word. And Lord, this is a great time and uh, example to die to ourself and how we want to feel or operate in reaction to those coming against us. The hatred being spewed. Lord, that we love our enemy that we bless them, Lord, that when we bless them, we are, we are actually blessing you because we are obeying your commandment. We are obeying your instruction. That that is not a suggestion, but you are saying, listen, this is what I want you to do because it will show evidence of my nature and, 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 and your lifestyle, Lord God. So, Father, may we respond accordingly, and thank you for the opportune time, even as we walk about our day and see what's out there, that we can respond according to your word, which is truth and life and everlasting. Holy Spirit, poke us and prod us more and more to respond according to you inside of us and not us inside of us, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. Um, be blessed this evening. Walk in God's promises, character, and nature. And we'll see you soon. Good night.